Hi guys, Jimmy McIntyre here. I'm extremely excited about the release of Raya Pro on Thursday. For those of you who haven't heard of Raya Pro, this panel makes digital blending so much easier while speeding up your workflow and giving you more options to beautifully enhance your photos without learning complex processes or steps. In this video, I'm going to show you how I went from this image with overexposed highlights and some underexposed shadows to this futuristic cityscape with nicely controlled highlights and shadows. And it only took a few minutes with Raya Pro. And let me show you how I did it. I'm just going to delete that layer and open up the brightest exposure. And we're going to use the brighter exposure to restore our shadows in our base exposure here. And under our base exposure we have a darker exposure which we're going to use to recover the highlights. Now to show you how quick the blending process is, I'm just going to choose the brighter exposure, go to rapid blend if and choose bright. And now the brighter exposure has instantly blended into the base exposure. You can see that it's restored all of the shadows without affecting the highlights. Now I'm going to bring the opacity of this layer down to 50 because we want to restore the shadows but we don't want a bright image. Next I'm going to make this layer invisible and I'm going to use luminosity masks to isolate these highlights and restore them from the darker exposure. To do that we're going to go to luminosity masks and choose create all. Next we have two options. Firstly we can look at the masks in the channels palette as usual or we can make a selection of a mask, let's say brights 2. Then we can go to preview overlay and we'll see everything in pink marks our selection. And I think this mask is a little bit too general. I'm going to turn the preview off and look at the classical mask and it does look like it would give us a good selection but I'm going to go for a more restrictive mask. So I'm going to go for brights 3. So just to look at the pink preview, we can see that this is a more restrictive mask and the highlights are nicely contained in our selection. With this selected we just need to turn the preview off, choose a paintbrush, select the mask and make sure we have our foreground set to black and now I'm just going to zoom in to the brighter areas and just restore some of those overexposed areas. And again, I'll do the same here, nicely and naturally restoring them. And we can do the same down the street here, just gently restoring the highlights. Now when you're doing this with your image, please take your time. I'm just trying to speed it up for demonstration purposes. Now I'm going to also bring back some of the highlights on the street here too. But I'm not affecting the road because I want these car trails to be nice and bright. And now that's the digital blending process over. We now have restored shadows and highlights and it only took a few seconds. Next we can enhance our image so we'll go to the enhancements tab. I want a cold futuristic cityscape scene so I want to desaturate most of these colors. To do that, I'm going to go down to Desaturate Colors and choose All. But first, I'm going to press Deselect to make sure I have no active selections from my luminosity masks. And now I can press All. And we'll see we've desaturated our colors. To inject some blues into our shadows, I'm going to go to Blue Shadows. Now, I like these added blues, but I feel like there's a little bit too much magenta. So I'm going to open up Blue Shadows, open up the layer called Blue Shadows, and just go to Shadows and just change the magenta slider to a more green feel. I'm going to increase those blues by going to vivid colors and choosing the blue option. And you'll see we've added more blues to our scene. And I'm going to take this one step further by adding a dreamy cold feel effect by choosing the Orton effect cold option. With this dialog, we just choose the strength of our Orton effect. And I'm going to leave it at about 37 and press OK. So now we have an Orton effect which is far too strong, so I'm going to open up the cold Orton effect and here's the cold layer and here's the Orton effect layer and I'm going to bring this all the way down to around 19% and that's the before and after. And here's the before and after for the cold Orton layer. And so now we have some lovely blues in our image. I'm going to add some emphasis on these buildings here and give the impression that the streetlights are so bright that they're illuminating the buildings. And I'm going to do that by using glow curves. And with glow curves, I just change the foreground color to white and paint in the area I wish to illuminate. So this is the before and after. Now it's a little bit strong, so I'm going to bring that down. And it might look a little bit out of place now, but when I apply a vignette, it will look a lot better. So let's apply a vignette now. I'm going to go to finish, 
and light vignette. And that gives us a nice vignette and I'm going to do that again to strengthen the effect. Now this vignette's a little bit strong so I'm going to create a mask on it, choose a black foreground colour and with an opacity of around 50% just paint out some of that vignette. And now we've got one final step. The thing I really love about this image is the fact that we have these beautiful light trails going all the way up our image and I want to really make them stand out and glow. And to do that I can use a function called Glow Free. And if I just click on Glow Free and have a white paintbrush selected and I'm going to make my paintbrush smaller, I can just, oh, and change the opacity to 100, I can just paint in a gentle glow. And if you can't see that in the tutorial, I'm just going to make it a bit stronger for you. And I'm going to make sure that I do a larger paintbrush and just add some extra glow here. Because it gives the impression that the road is leading to this beautiful, brightly lit area, which is a hub of activity. And so once we finish, I'm just going to choose all of the layers and group them so we can see a before and after. And then I'm just going to go to prepare and choose 1500 pixels wide and prepare my image for the web and when that's done we can zoom in a hundred percent and look at how beautifully sharp these buildings are and if you're working with Adobe color space the image is automatically being converted to a more ideal color space for the web and that's it just a few minutes to go from an image with overexposed and underexposed areas to a futuristic sharp cityscape with nicely controlled shadows and highlights now if anybody has any questions about Raya Pro, please feel free to ask me in the comments box below. Until then, thank you very much for watching.